Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. Special guests here, all kind of good stuff coming on. But first, let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Drew Pollard's company, Gulf Coast Air Conditioner up there in Southport. And it's, they keep us cool, so make sure you give them a call if something happens. They do good work there. High today, 86, low 76. Water temperature at the end of the pier, exactly 84.7. So we'll round it up to 85. Been that way about the past uh, nine or 10 days, right around 85 degrees. And that's bringing in a lot of those mahi that you saw the pictures of yesterday. Our river reading is brought to us by Mountain Dew. On the outdoors of Mountain Dew. We're looking at the Apalachicola Blunt Sound, 9.2. It's in pretty good shape, but uh, you look at the Appala I mean the Choctatchee at Caraville, and that, that's pretty high right there. The Apalachicola dropping out a little bit, but the Choctahatchee is, is gonna be up for the weekend. So if you, you're gonna have high water if you're getting on the Choctahatchee this weekend. Take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, Cemetery and Funeral Home right here on 23rd Street in Panama City. We're looking at a high tide at 1.05 and a low tide at 10.09 tonight. So it's not going, we're about to hit those neap tides tomorrow and Saturday. Sorry about those weekend fishermen. Uh, if you're going to try to fish the tidal flats, it's going to be your neap tide this weekend, next couple of days. So uh, it'll be better though next week. Let's our wind direction now will be coming out of south, southeast at about eight. It's going to be a nice day, about 30, 40% chance of rain. So it's going to be a nice day. Let's take a break, come back with our special guest. Okay, welcome back. I'm glad to have Officer Bobby Ramos with us this morning. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Glad to have you. We first got to say hello, Mom and Dad, because I know they're That's watching. That's right. Hey, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about them. There's some good outdoor people right there. They are. Good folks. All right. We, uh, I, I told Bobby when he, when he comes on, it's nice because I, I don't have to do much prep work, but he, he's already spent a couple of hours getting ready, so I'm going to let you go with it, buddy. All right. Thank you, sir. I want to throw a reminder out there that we're still in red snapper season. Um, our 55-day season will be ending on July 29th, so there's still plenty of time to get out there and catch those big monsters. Um, nothing's changed with your day, the bag limit, two fish, 16-inch total length on your red snapper. And, and the other exciting news, the Greater Amberjack and Great Sugar Fish season are going to be opening back up in the first of the month, back in August. Uh, greater AJs, 34 inches to your fork, and the Great Sugar Fish, 15 inches to your fork. Um, those seasons are subject to opening and closing when the recreational harvest has been met. Yeah. But for right now, we'll say, you know, at least on the first of the month, it's going to reopen one fish per day on both of those. And then also, uh, bay scallop season has started up. And um, over mm -hmm. in, we got a picture on that, I think. Yeah. It, it will throw that up Wait. there. Shows you kind of the, our zones. You can see over there in Franklin County. Um, it's already kicked off and in Port St. Joe area, which I know is a, a favorite area by many, uh, mm -hmm. including my family and, and yours, Winston. Yeah. Uh, that'll be opening up here just around the corner in, in August. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit. So the Franklin County through the northwestern Taylor County, that region includes all your state waters from the westernmost point of St. Vincent Island in Franklin County to Rock Island near the mouth of the Fen Holloway River in Taylor County. And then at St. Joe Bay in Gulf County, that season opens up on August 16th and runs through the 24th of September. That region is all your state waters from Mexico Beach Canal and Bay County over to the westernmost point of St. Vincent Island in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. And in all those areas, no changes on your bag limits. It's still going to be two gallons of whole bay scallops in the mm -hmm. shell or one pint of bay scallops meat. Um, you know, I noticed something interesting in that in those schedules right there. The bottom one, Pasco County, they only opened up for ten days. Did right, you, and that that shows you the pressure that's probably on those scallops, and they've probably done the scallop camps and all. They all that. do scalloping has changed. You know, I'm sure we knew mm -hmm. you were a younger man, and, and oh my you, goodness, you see a few boats out there. You go out there oh nowadays, man. and you can't throw a rock without yeah. hitting a boat. I tell people that it's it's it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it is, is. It is, and because of that, we'll kind of get into that. I'll use that as a segue to talk about our next portion on here which is our dive flag safety you yes. know with all those people in the water it's extremely important that your boaters out there um, slow down and, and be very cognizant of the dangers of swimmers in the water some mm -hmm. a lot of people use your dive flags like you're supposed to but some people may not be mm -hmm. so let's talk about that for just a minute 
Um, with the opening of scallop season fast approaching, the FWC wants to remind everybody engaged in this fun activity to please use a diver's down warning device whenever you're snorkeling or scuba diving. Uh, your diver's down symbol is what we call is a dive flag. Mm -hmm. is rectangular, red, and uh, square, and red in color with a white diagonal stripe. A diver's down flag displayed on a boat must be at least 20 inches by 24 inches and displayed at the highest point where it can be observed from 360 degrees around that vessel. Mm -hmm. A buoy cannot be used or displayed from a vessel. A diver's down flag or buoy displayed from the water has to be 12 inches by 12 inches long. Okay, and your flag still has to have a wire or some other type of stiffener to keep it open. Yeah, and I know the waders and sometimes people can go out from shore and all. They, they can use those smaller ones, but the smaller ones can't go in a boat. Yeah, that, which, that, yeah. That's right, right. So it's 12 by 12 if they're going to have it out there in the water. It's mm -hmm. got to be the, the larger 12 by 24 if they're going to be using it from a boat. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the most important part of all this is your, your vessels, when you see these dive flags that are out there in the waters, you got to make a reasonable effort to stay 100 feet away from a diver's down device in a river or an inlet or a channel. And in open waters, it's got to be 300 feet away. Okay, so make every effort to right. observe that safety distance. If you have to come closer to that, then slow down to an idle speed. Okay, okay. that's what we, you know, we talk about this, and especially St. Joe Bay, I've been going there forever, mm -hmm. and I, I tell them the length of a football field, 300 feet. Sure. I said, stay that far away from that flag. Uh, that's a law. It is. <laughs> so it make is. sure, and then slow down. That's right. Slow down. You've, you've been experienced with, the, with the accidents and all. Unfortunately, so you've seen it. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's slow down. Yeah, abs absolutely. And and it works both ways. So, so if you're operating a vessel, you know, you've got to respect these limits that are in there. But if you're the person in the water, whether you're on scuba or snorkeling, it's the same way. You've mm -hmm. got to make sure that you stay within that 100 feet or 300 feet mm -hmm. in open water of your flag as well. Mm -hmm. And then especially in the bay system like that, a lot of times, you know, if you're out there scalloping or like that, you can hear the mount boards kind of coming close. Yes. Just take a second, stand up. Exactly. Say hi, wave to the people around you, make sure that they see you. You know, exactly. Um, you know, yeah, we, a lot it. of people when they're driving them vessels, they get tunnel vision and they they're looking for this, and they may not mm -hmm. see these obstacles, including people that are around them. Exactly. So right. we want everyone to get out there and, and enjoy the scalloping season. But mm -hmm. most important thing is to do it safely. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back about it. Welcome back, sitting here with Officer Ramos. Hey, we got so much stuff. He's, uh, He's organized now, see how he keeps it like that. And uh, so let's get what we got next. All right, all right. We'll talk about American alligators. Now, we're in Florida, I don't think we can't do this show without talking about alligators. Yes. We, uh, last time we talked about bears, and uh, this time we're gonna talk about alligators. So okay. <laughs> got, some, got some good information for you here. So Florida has a healthy and a stable alligator population, which is estimated at 1.3 million alligators of every size. Alligators occur in all 67 counties, including all wetlands where there's adequate food and shelter. Uh, they do prefer freshwater lakes and slow moving rivers and their associated wetlands, but they can be found in brackish or saltwater habitats. We get a lot of questions, especially, you know, visitors and guests coming down to Florida. Are there alligators here? I'm like, yes. Yes. You know, it's just like if we go to the water, if this, is there sharks in this water? I'm like, yeah. can you take salt in it? You know, yes. And there's and actually, I know in Central Florida, I have a friend down there, and he runs an airboat just so people can come in from, from Europe and places like that to see alligators. Oh, yes. They just want to see them. That's right. That's it's right. Crazy. Yeah, you've got some people who will pay to see them, and you got other people who don't want to see them no matter what. That's so, right. And at this time of the year, we're going to see more of them because of the of the weather and the change. Mm -hmm. And the alligators are going to become more visible and active during your spring and summer. Uh, when the temperatures rise, their metabolism increases, and they start looking for food. Uh, but taking some simple precautionary measures when in or near the water, people can reduce the chance of conflicts with alligators. So first of all, keep your safe distance if you see an alligator. Um, and we say if, if you're in Florida long enough, you're gonna see an alligator. You're about the commonest squirrels in some places. Yep. If you're concerned about an alligator, call our FWC. We have a toll-free nuisance alligator hotline. That's at 866-FWC-GATOR. So that's a lot easier to remember than that number. So 866-FWC-GATOR, um, or you can call our regular dispatch number, and we'll dispatch a contracted nuisance alligator trapper to resolve that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the smaller alligators and the regular FWC officer will go out and handle, but with the bigger ones, we need a, a contractor to go yeah. out there and assist with those. I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, some, it's, it's we, we, we like some professional assistance every now and then. Um, some other general safety, you know, 
ideas. Uh, keep your pets on a leash and away from the water's edge. Pets often resemble alligators natural prey. Swim only in designated swim areas during your daylight hours and without your pet. Alligators are the most active between dusk and dawn. Never feed an alligator. Feeding alligators is illegal and dangerous, and when fed, alligators lose their natural weariness of people mm -hmm. and instead learn to associate people with the availability of food. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of the social right. media accounts going around and Facebook, TikTok, and, and things like that, you see this behavior occurring where mm -hmm. the alligators come right at the people, mm -hmm. and you know that's a fed alligator. You yeah. know? And oh, it's, yeah. it's very unfortunate, uh, aside from being illegal, but because it makes it a very big risk to public safety. Yeah. So. Um, if we, you know, are, are able to, you know, apprehend somebody who's doing that intentionally, um, they will be charged accordingly. But, um, the good news is we also have <clears throat> a statewide alligator harvest program, which was implemented back in 1988 to provide recreational harvest opportunities mm -hmm. of our alligators. So Florida's harvest program is a nationally <clears throat> and internationally recognized for a sustainable use of a renewable natural resource. Every year, alligator management units are established with harvest quotas that provide recreational opportunities for people from Florida and beyond to harvest alligators and maintain populations at targeted levels. Alligator meat is a healthy and organic source of lean protein and the hide can be tanned and made into attractive, durable leather products. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take part in the statewide alligator harvest program, you have to have an alligator trapping license and or a statewide alligator harvest permit. These are limited entry permits and they're issued up to three random drawings and then a final leftover phase if necessary. Most of our application dates for this year have already passed and, and a lot yeah. of the alligator tags or the CITES tags yeah. as we call them have been issued, but there's still a phase four leftover period that closes on September 30th okay. um, for anything that hasn't been taken up yet. Yeah, you get a lot of out of town people, out of state people. I mean, we do. Of, they really want to give, be a part of this. What yeah. They do, and, and, um, and because of that, the limited entry permit allows for the take of two alligator license, or two alligators using mm -hmm. the tags, and for residents, it's $272. Uh, for a non-resident, $1,022, and then if you have a Florida Disabled Hunting and Fishing License, it's $22 for that. Um, the harvest areas and dates are specific for every permit, and the permit specify the boundaries or the limitations of that harvest area. A permit holder is, uh, you know, the person who's got that tag, they have to be present during the harvest. And, uh, but you can have unlimited helpers if they have that $52 alligator trapping agent license. Okay. Now, if you're just gonna go for a boat ride and just sit back and watch and you're not taking an active part of that hunt, you can do that, you can spectate for free. Okay, uh, people but, wanna know that. Where yeah, but that, if yeah. you're going to participate in the actual take of that alligator, mm -hmm. you know, if you're gonna be you know, doing something that's actually gonna put that alligator down, you need to have that trapping agent license, $52. Yeah. But yeah. it's free to watch. If you can go out there and just sit back and enjoy the show. but. Um, our harvest season begins at 5 p.m. on August 15th and ends on 10 a.m. on November 1st. Okay. Uh, depending on the harvest period a hunter has been awarded, they're assigned to hunt one of the first four weeks of the alligator hunting season. Hunters who don't harvest both of their alligators during their assigned harvest week can hunt during the open period, which runs from September 12th to November 1st. And your legal harvest hours are from 5 p.m. in the afternoon mm -hmm. to 10 o'clock the next morning. And we're going to have more than 7,000 harvest permits available this season throughout the entire state of Florida. What percentage do you think of them will we get out of 7,000? How many will them get? It them depends, on, depends on your area. Yeah. I know we do get uncollected tags at the end of the, of the season. You know, if you don't use both your tags, you have to return those back to FWC. Yeah. And we get some of them back, but not many. Okay. So <laughs> we we're talking about 7,000 out of 1.3 million, mm -hmm. so that's not putting a dent in it. I mean, that's we've right. got plenty of gators right. out there. And these are just the ones that are open for recreational harvest. Yeah. This doesn't include the alligators that are taken through other lawful methods like right. our, our nuisance alligator program right. and our contracted trappers and stuff like that. They take more than those per year as well. And plus, you also have incidental kills and mm -hmm. road kills and things like yeah. that. So there's more than 7,000 alligators being taken every year. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that's, it, there has to be, if not. That's, <laughs> that's right. Well, right. and that's what we talked about earlier. It's yeah. a sustainable, naturally renewable program. Right. You know, the, the agency has done a great job of managing Managing these numbers really in order have. for people to get out and have a great hunt, but still have a great resource in the wild too. Yeah, and I, I'm going to. Uh, you got me excited about gators now. I've interviewed what about four years, four or five years ago. Interviewed a couple from Alabama that has the uh, American record of the biggest gator. I actually, got in Alabama. You think it'd be Florida, 
So Jeff reminded me next week, I'm going to shut a little five minute interview, like it's 14 foot. I mean, they had it mounted. And I saw, mm. I interviewed him up at Ufala at a conference, but uh, some of y'all may remember that. I want to show that again because uh, the gators are interesting. They are. That mean, you can eat them, you can make a purse out of them, you just do all kinds of things. They are, there yeah. are. And that's actually in Florida. It's a very lucrative industry as well. You know, I we bet. talked about the alligator farms, farms. down south and like I, that. And are they still going strong, the alligator farms down there? Oh, they're doing very well. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. It's, like I said, it's a very lucrative industry. It's a very regulated industry because mm -hmm. of the money involved with it like that. Um, but absolutely, down central Florida, south Florida, if you haven't had a chance to go visit one of these farms, you know, go ahead and do that and you'll, you'll learn quite a lot. Sound like a Panhandle Outdoor Road Trip. That's right. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with a final segment, which will have the case of the month. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at a fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers down in Port St. Joe. We're looking at 408 to 608 this morning and this afternoon, 431 to 631. That's a little two hour block. That's going to be good. So tell your boss you got to leave early and go catch some fish. Or, well, you can't get a gator now, but. Anyway, because it'd be illegal, so we <laughs> says way into the case of the month where these knuckleheads are doing these things. So, case Absolutely. of the month. All right, so um, officers Rice, Brady, and National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, what we call NOAA, Federal Officer Rob were patrolling federal waters in the Gulf of Mexico. The officers conducted a resource inspection on a vessel approximately 40 miles southeast of the Panama City Pass. It's a pretty good click out there. Yeah. You know? While approaching the vessel, the officers aver observed in plain view six red snapper on the swim deck of the vessel that had been filleted, a lane snapper on the cutting board, which is being used for bait, and four more snapper on the deck of the vessel. Mm. So officers Rice and no officer Rob boarded the vessel, which had three people on board. And then as they kept looking around and were inspecting, they found five more red snapper that were located inside the fish box. So these individuals were issued citations for undersized red snapper, over the bag limit of red snapper, and red snapper not in whole condition. So <laughs> yeah, I use examples sometimes, you know, those, those kids back in school, they sat in the back of the classroom, but I think some of them didn't even, didn't even come to class. Yeah, some of them must have missed out. And then because of where they're at too, so they also had a federal citation for issue, for, um, for using reef fish as a bait. Um, that's a big no-no in federal waters, mm -hmm. the, the feds. When we have our no officers and our partners on board, that's always something they're looking for. And uh, when you start getting to the federal levels, fines can be pretty significant. That's right. The federal will be tied in. They with are. That. So good. We've got another case on there, very similar. Um, while patrolling the federal waters in the Gulf of Mexico, south of Franklin County, on board the offshore patrol vessel, we had two officers, Nelson and Raker. Uh, they located a vessel about 60 miles south of Cape San Blas. And upon approaching the vessel, the officers observed an injury will bend down in the boat, <laughs> grab a, a red grouper and toss it overboard. And so that red grouper was seized and uh, found to be undersized and with stiff rigor mortis. And um, so they boarded that boat and they located up more cut up red snapper being used for bait. And the occupants of the vessel admitted to possessing and discarding the fish when they saw law enforcement coming. So those people were um, cited for um, failure to allow an inspection, which is an obstruction with an FWC officer, failure to land that fish in whole condition, possession of undersized red grouper, and also using reef fish for bait. So uh, yeah. um, pretty, pretty, you know, vagrant violations of, of our fishing laws that we have. And that sort of adds insult on injury when you throw them, throw them overboard because that's another violation, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you try yes. to get rid of the evidence. It is. And it typically, when people do that to that, in addition to the fine, you know, depending on the situation, they usually go to jail too. Really? Yep, yep, yep. So don't obstruct or interfere with an officer doing their job. It's yeah, a good yeah, way to, yeah. to go to the, to the slammer. Just go ahead when you see them coming, instead of doing this with your hands, just do this. Yeah, you know that'd be better. That'd, that'd be better. save. If, you got, if you're not doing anything wrong, they welcome, most people welcome us aboard and oh, it's yeah. not an issue. But when, when they see us coming and they start tossing fish, you know that they know. That's a giveaway. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, one, of, one of the things uh, I know that that's snapper is, is a big thing now, but it's, it's other thing, other fish too, y'all see a lot of infractions on that, don't you? They, of, we uh, do, we see a lot, you know, throughout uh, any of our reef fish that we get in there and talk about, we're still getting people who are keeping trigger fish right now, um, undersized red snapper, mm -hmm. undersized vermilion snapper, believe it or not. You know, we, a, a friend of mine made a case the other day um, he had, I think the people on the boat have four or five, eight or nine inch, you know, vermilion red snapper. Really? So, um, yeah, as we see it all. I mean, we just don't have enough time to talk about all the, the cases yeah. that are out there, but. Well, I, I know, yeah, you get, you were talking about, you get a monthly report and it's 
longer than we want it to be. It, it, it is, and unfortunately, I have a lot of stuff to talk about and then kind of go through it, but I try to pick out the big stuff where there's multiple violations. Yeah. In a situation particularly where, you know, people definitely knew better. You know, yeah. uh, we, we look at the big picture when we decide who to write and who not to write. Um, when people start throwing fish on us and they see us coming, they knew better. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's pretty evident. That's right. I mean, if they just like if they if it's a mistake and all, y'all are smart enough and that's good right. enough, you know. Mm -hmm. And but and the rest of them, they're is legal size, and one of them might be that far off or whatever. Sure, sure. Usually, I, I we, know I've, yeah. I've heard those stories and all, but uh, I'm just thankful we've got y'all out there. Certainly. If not, you stop to think about what they would do uh, without any kind of uh, ramification from their uh, infraction. Also, when. Uh, when scallop season opened, before we get to that, y'all also check the bridges and, and the fishing piers and all. Oh yeah, yeah, do, yeah. It's not just boats, I know. That's right, well there's really nowhere that we don't check, so it's yeah. funny because sometimes we'll talk to people and we'll say, man, I just the third time I've been checked this week. And I talked <laughs> to another person five minutes later, he said, I haven't been checked in a year. So, yeah. you know, some of it is just, um, it's timing, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it might be your location. And, and what I always tell people is just because just you don't see us doesn't mean that we don't see you. Yeah. Because y'all have been known to go undercover. Yeah, yeah, all we'll, law I won't go into go, all that. All, but all, all, under, all law enforcement go undercover. Just so you don't see the outfit right there, don't mean they're not out there. That so, is correct. Our view and all this, I can promise you, they're law abiding, seriously, good folks and all. I know. But they got to check on their cousins sometime. Or <laughs> <laughs> make sure if they don't watch the show and all, make sure they're behaving. Well, about to wrap it up, you got uh, what's coming up this month with you? We all got a lot of stuff going on. And we are finally through the uh, the the busiest part of our year over in that section. We had our big Fourth of July weekend that we concluded, and then followed like that um, with the Blue Angels Air Show, which was a huge event over there in mm -hmm. uh, Scambia and Santa Rosa counties. We had absolutely thousands of, of visitors come through with, with vessels and and the uh, the Blues, you know, put on a tremendous show on both Friday and Saturday. Um, wonderful, you know, asset in our community over there. Yeah. Um, we're glad that's behind us, and now uh, we can look forward to our last big boating season. is really going to be the Labor Day weekend, Labor and then weekend. before that, we'll be talking about hunting. All right, sounds good. Good job on this, and appreciate you coming over. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for watching Panhand Outdoors. Do something good today for your fellow man. Enjoy our beautiful outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.